this uh, episode I'm basically going to show you my ultimate um, flat fish trays which I would be able to catch almost every fish in the sea with um, from grey sharks all the way down to honey cones um, what we need is a lovely pair of scissors just to cut the nylon a pair of side cutters for the wire the wire we're using is surflon 90 pound 7x7 seven seven. it's a very soft supple line or soft supple wire nylon coated wire that we use definitely going to be using a lot of that this year um, standard cone sinker 6 ounce 7 ounce my standard weight that I throw UV light basically to cure the UV knot sense and I'll show you where we use that a lighter to burn the nylon coated wire or to melt the nylon coated wire um, some 19 kilo 25 kilo nylon can be old doesn't have to be brand new but I like to use this it's a soft supple line it's to tie the knots with and I'll show you later on as we go our number three or size two power swivel it's a very nice uh, swivel strong it's nice and big so when someone's actually holding the leader that they don't hurt themselves it's quite big but I like to use that NT swivel works extremely well for running up and down the wire because we're using the surf line you don't want to damage the wire it's very expensive definitely NT swivels standard little dangle that I make it's nylon coated wire you can see in the previous episodes how to make this very easy basically that's it there our standard sinker clip nothing fancy and our new um, hook that we're bringing out at the moment it's very new for us I've been using it for the last six months this is basically the demon circle nano the nice part about it is it is triangular wire that they're using it's not round so when it comes to flexing this way basically that way it doesn't flex at all because of the tension and the tensile strength of the triangular wire I've been using it for a long time I've used it for sandies browns honeycombs diamonds and it does not open that is the nice feature about this actual hook unfortunately it only comes up to a nano in size but we'll talk about it later on I'll just show you the hook basically what it looks like that's how you get it um, they work extremely well like I said sharp point it's got a bigger barb on the front um, you can actually just take a pair of pliers and break it off if you want but I haven't had any problems with it as yet so I'm just leaving them on it's got a soldered R over there very very important so your wire doesn't come off in any way mains or form it works extremely well for the ski boat guys that are fishing for tuna okay enough on that I'm just going to show you how the trace looks and obviously a little clear bead that I use just as a knot protector um, you'll see where I use that as we're going along okay first of all 1.6 meters 1.5 meters of wire one and a bit there we go so that's pretty much okay that's what I was looking for okay. to start off with you just insert the wire through the eye like that and all you're doing is wrapping it around the eye of the hook five to six times nothing more this wire that I work with, the 7x7 surf line, is absolutely phenomenal. Okay, ready to do it. So what we do is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times like that. We take the tag end of the actual leftover wire, stick it through and down. Very important that you go from the top down basically so that you end up getting the actual circular loop that you're looking for okay it's going to get a little bit tricky now because what I need to do is melt the wire 
preferably find something that you can stick it onto. A board, uh, burglar guards, anything along those lines. Just lightly melt it. You don't want to burn it off completely, you just want to melt the plastic. Okay, and you'll feel, you'll actually see that it starts to bubble the plastic itself. Just take our fingers with a bit of moisture on it. Oh, okay, and there we go. If you look at it closely, you can see how the plastic has actually welded itself together. So all the strands have basically come together there. There we go. Okay. Take side cutters and we cut it off as close as we can. Cut off that little piece of tag end. And there's the start of what we're trying to achieve. About 50 to 40 centimeters away, which would be about, that's 50. So we'll just make it 50, it's fine. I'm going to take a little bit of our Kingfisher nylon. 19 kilo, 25 kilo like I said. Give it a bit of a snip. Instead of using a crimp, what I'm going to do is tie a figure of eight. So basically you're going to go around the wire and your finger once, twice, three times. Go through the back of the actual line loops that we've made. Open it up now to form the figure of eight. There's the figure of eight forming as you can see over there. Just pull it not too tight, we're just going to be able to move it, so I want to get my length right again, so I'll move it until I get to where I want it to be, which would be perfect, that's about 450 that I'm making this one, and now we just lubricate and pull tight, and pull tight, okay, cut off all the little pieces of nylon once again, just put that down there, Cut that piece off there, nice and cleanly, cut it as close as you can. And we're just going to do the same process once again. Making a figure eight again, one, two, three times. Form our figure of eight. There we go, slide it down to where the first knot was, which is over there, and now we pull tight. Cut off as closely as we can. So basically, what we've done is we formed two knots close together. You can either use super glue if you want and just put a drop of super glue on the actual knots there to stop it from slipping. I personally prefer the UV knot sense. So to do that all we're going to do is take one little drop on each side. Just do that and there. Just twist it around so we've got it there. Okay. Okay, so there's the UV, the Loon's UV knot sense on each side. I'm just going to use my finger just to smooth it out a little bit to make sure that it's gone into the actual grooves of the nylon, which I'm very happy with there. We then take our UV light and we just basically bake it for a couple of seconds. And that should have dried it, let's say 30 seconds, there we go, it's gone nice and hard. So if you just zoom in there you can have a look at it nicely. Okay, from there we're going to add our bead, clear bead preferably, through the R all the way down. To the end. Okay, so there's our bead which is now the stopper for our NT swivel. 
So we'll go by anti swivel out here. This is the number four. You do get a number three, which is a little bit bigger. But I find with this lighter wire, this 90 pound uh, Surflon Supreme, the size three seems to work the best. Basically go through the eye. And if you look at it, the NT swivel is flanged on either side. The top part on either side of it. You can actually see the actual flanging. So what happens is when the wire runs down it, it doesn't kink the actual wire and cause all those pigtails that you normally get uh, that you'll see in normal wire if you're using other kind of uh, swivel tees or stuff like that um, yeah or swivels so basically that's basically what you're trying to achieve it runs very freely um, if there's little grits of sand that go into it it will still run and flow freely so if the fish pulls off it's not a problem at all Okay, <clears throat> and like I said, I'm going to make it 1.5 meters. Uh, I need to just cut it over there, otherwise, it's going to be a bit too long for me. We take a number three power swivel. Okay, and I'm already tight here. Mm. Okay, so all we do is go through the eye of the swivel, take it around once, twice around, forming a figure of eight. That's what's nice about this wire. It's like working with nylon basically. It's nice, it's soft, it's very supple. Okay, so there's your figure of eight. Just give a bit of lubrication. Stick your fingers into it like that when you're holding it. As you can see, I've got it just like this, guys. Take your pliers and just pull it so that at least the, the knot goes tight. Put your fingers onto the knot and then just slide it all the way down to the end. It stops it creating any of those little pig loops that you see, pigtail loops. Okay. Then what I do is I just put my hook into it, wrap it around my, my legs like that and pull tight just so that that not on the figure of eight actually pulls tight on itself. And we just cut off the tag end as close as we can. And just make sure that the last little bit there, you can see how it's sitting, sitting perfectly straight. And that's pretty much what the trace looks like. Okay, now I'm just going to add the nylon part of it, my dangle and my sinker, so you can see the completed trace and the completed length of the actual trace. <clears throat> Again, just to attach the, sw uh, the sinker line, all we do is go around three times, one, two, three times. Go through the back of it, like so. Stick your finger in and pull the knot reasonably tight. Lubricate, slide it all the way down, and then just pull tight. There we go. There is the figure of eight for my sinker. Take a pair of scissors, cut it as closely as you can, nice and neat. Measure off the length that you actually want it to be. So we take our dangle, we're going to stick our dangle through there. Take our line, and we want to tie the knot about there. So there we go, I've basically measured the length of my sinker snoot, attaching my sinker clip now, and again one, two, three times around, back through, 
forming my figure of eight. There we go, there's a figure of eight. There we go. Lubricate. Slide down and pull tight. Okay. Take our sinker, preferably a cone sinker for this demonstration. Um, sometimes the clips are bent in quite a bit. All we do just to open it up a bit so we make sure that it does. There we go. We just slightly bend it out so that when it's sitting on the dangle, and when it does hit the water, it comes off every time. Okay, so let's just double check ourselves again. Okay, here we go. Simple as that. Okay, I'm going to give you a view on how long this actually is from top to bottom. That is my go-to trace. If you ask me, take one trace and go and fish for flatfish anywhere on this coastline. That would be the trace that I'd grab. I'll catch brown skates on it, I'll catch grey sharks on it, diamonds, honeycones, sandies. It's a very good hook for sandies. Um, yeah, guys, that's it. That's my ultimate trace for flatfish on the Natal coastline. Um, obviously if you're fishing for bigger fish like raggies and that, you're going to have to go onto other wires. But that's my go-to trace anywhere on this coastline. Enjoy. <laughs>